Hello everyone and welcome to the Agricultural and Industrial Museum. Today we're going to be talking about ice manufacturing in York. Ice manufacturing has kind of a long history here in York and it starts way back <laughs> in 1874 when the York Manufacturing Company was established. But if we go back even further than that <laughs> um, to natural ice harvesting here in York, um, we're going to talk about the biggest object in our museum, but before we look at that, we're going to look at the smallest object in the museum, in the Agriculture and Industrial Museum, and that would be this little model of um, uh, men cutting ice on the Cadoras Creek. And um, this would actually be how ice was harvested. We'd wait till the winter time. And we see a man with a horse and sort of a plow looking uh, tool that would score the ice so that the other men could come along and cut the ice with saws. It would then be loaded onto this conveyor belt, go up and be stored into, in the ice house. This conveyor belt was powered by a steam engine. The ice would then actually wait, <laughs> live in uh, the ice house until the warm weather months when it would then be delivered to people's homes. And here behind me, you can see some of the tools that these gentlemen would have used to harvest natural ice from water sources in our area. You can also see behind me our ice box. This ice box is actually pretty interesting. The block of ice would go in the top here. So we'd open this up, store our block of ice in here, and all of our items that need to stay cold um, go down in here. It's not very large. You would really have to decide what is important to stay cold. So it might be limited to dairy products and, and ooh, sorry, and meat. Um, now, natural ice does have some, some problems. There are pros. It's, it's efficient. It's cheap. Um, but what you are getting is frozen uh, water from our local rivers and ponds. And it's not always the cleanest source. So the ice that's going into your ice box and it will eventually melt, may have dirt and leaves and other things in it. And as it melts, that container in there and the drainage from it, they get kind of scummy and dirty. Now the York I, uh, Manufacturing Company was started in 1874 at a time when people were really relying on ice that would be harvested from natural sources. And not a lot of people thought that there was a whole lot of value in trying to manufacture ice. Until 1890, when there was a particularly warm winter in which none of the natural sources froze. That summer, a lot of people actually got food poisoning um, because they weren't able to keep their food cold. Um, so, the machine that we're going to look at today, I'm doing this on my own today, so please be patient as I move the camera around, is our A-frame ammonia compressor. And it is very large. Um, and you'll actually be able to get a better view of it in a minute, but I'm going to turn this on and hopefully you'll be able to see how this runs. I know it's a little difficult to see with the uh, windows in the background. It kind of messes with the light. Um, you might notice that it's not very loud. You hear some pops and some hissing, but that's really all the noise this thing makes. Now, it is very large. However, this is not the entire machine. If I can show you this um, model down here, 
this, it would be the entire machine. So you can see we have the A-frame compressor, um, but what we're missing are things like the expansion valve, the boiler that would run the machine, and uh, the brine tank. So how this works. Process of refrigeration has four basic steps. And refrigeration is actually just a transfer of heat. So we're not adding cold to anything, we're removing heat through different steps throughout the machine. The, so we have the ammonia compressor cylinder. When you compress something, um, it creates pressure and increases the heat and it increases temperature. And so what our machine wants to do is reject the heat. So um, we're changing the ammonia from the state of liquid to gas and then back to liquid. And ammonia boils at negative 28 degrees Fahrenheit, so we don't really need to do, to do a whole lot. Hot, heat and cold, or hot and cold, are, are very relative. Um, so the piston in the chamber, the pressure increases um, and the temperature increases. So from out of the piston, we have um, ammonia gas and the condenser also helps uh, can, uh, inc increase that pressure. Um, the expansion valve, you know, we have hot gas coming through here then it's cooling. And so as we have the hot gas, heat will always go into the thing, into what <laughs> is colder. So if we have warmer air around those pipes, then it's gonna disp disperse the heat into that colder thing. So if the surrounding air is warmer than the gas, which it boils at negative 28, that's not gonna be very hard to do. It gives up heat to the air, turns back into a liquid. The liquid then goes into an expansion valve where the pressure drops, temperature drops, and the ammonia is turned back into a liquid. And so we're cycling this through. And so in the tank that you saw, the brine tank, we do have salt water, brine, so that the freezing point of that water is higher. So it can be 32 degrees Fahrenheit, um, the point at which water freezes, but not be frozen. And if you see the metal canister here, here let me, let's get a good look at this. The metal canister here is the size of ice blocks that we're making. So in that brine tank, we have canisters, and I'm gonna stand next to it so you can see how big it is, this size, that are filled with fresh water. The fresh water will freeze, because there's no salt in it, at the regular freezing point of water. So we're making giant blocks of ice. These aren't going to be delivered to people's homes for their ice boxes, they may be delivered to businesses, but a lot of times these are going to rail cars so that um, foods that would be shipped across the country would stay cold. This machine, which was actually built in 1904 and shipped to Wichita, Kansas and assembled and used there, um, that's what it did. It made ice blocks. And in Kansas, I'm going to assume that they are shipping meat products all over the country. So when we can keep food cold, um, well, colder, cool, <laughs> it lasts longer. So we can have tomatoes from California being shipped to Pennsylvania. We can have meat from those flatlands in the center of our country uh, being sent to both coasts and them last perfectly well, be perfectly um, able to be eaten when they arrive. Now the York Manufacturing Company has had a couple of different names over the years. The York Ice Machinery Corporation, York Air Conditioning, but in, in a couple of different ways, it still exists today, just under different names. Now I'm gonna back up the camera so that you can see the full machine. 
Um, if you have any questions, we'll just, I'll just let you look at the machine operate for a little while. And if you have questions, you can type those into the little chat area and I will try to answer them as best I can. So you might be able to see the, uh, the wooden cylinders up there. That's where the ammonia compression actually takes place, um, along with the, the condenser that we don't actually have. You can see our very large flywheel operating. There are pistons here that are, are driving the machine and creating pressure. Um, and I don't think, I don't see any questions yet, um, but we'll give you just a few more minutes if you have anything, let us know. You can also ask questions. After these pop-up tours are over, we will check in and make sure that we, we answer your question, even after the fact. One other thing, we will be opening to the public in April. So if you'd like to see this machine in person, which you really should to kind of get how large it really is, um, please come see us. We'd love to see you again. We've, we've missed... Um, visitors <laughs> coming into the museum and so please uh, come and see us. All right, everyone, I don't see any questions, but like I said, if you haven't finished typing them, go ahead and, and put those in the chat and we'll get to them. Um, but we really look forward to seeing you all soon. Have a wonderful weekend.